And we welcome in Dr. Tim McKnight, uh, right after the holiday. Good morning. Good to see you. Good morning. That was your lead-in song was Fire, because we wanted to talk about indigestion and heartburn. Good choice. Yeah. <laughs> it's a good accident. So uh, are those related? I mean, uh, one can be called the other, I suppose. Yes. But... Uh, that That's really how it feels. But I... You know, before we talk about indigestion, I don't want your listeners to think every indigestion is heartburn. No. Uh, because it can often be a warning sign of a heart attack. We had a, in my residency program, we were waiting for our neurologist to come in and lecture to us one morning, and he didn't show up. And turns out that he had been having bad heartburn for weeks. Just, uh, uh, they found him in a chair with a bottle of Tums next to him. He died of a heart attack, didn't make it in that day, so... Uh, have to be really careful, especially if you're at risk. Uh, you know, if you're over 40 and a man in particular, um, don't don't just assume indigestion is a heartburn problem. Be very very careful about that. Yeah. But indigestion is a really common problem, and I think that's what most people think. Oh, this is indigestion, and I'll take something to relieve it. And sometimes that's correct, and sometimes you're wrong. What causes that? I'm well, sure there are a variety of things. Well, there's there's two. Uh, main causes in my uh, in my experience. One, the most common is the muscle that closes um, the uh, the food pipe, the esophagus, right at as as it enters the stomach. Sometimes that muscle doesn't close tight. That's why babies spit up. That muscle has to mature, and, and once it matures, then they don't spit up as much. Uh, but for many of us, that muscle is impaired or doesn't work well. If we use too much alcohol, it won't close tight. If we have too much nicotine in our system, it won't close tight. And if we use too much caffeine, it won't close tight. And then the other real common issue is a, a big gut. If you've got a, a, a beer belly or a big gut and you're wearing particularly tight pants, that pressure that those pants puts on your belly can exert that force upwards. And it's almost like a, a blowhole where that inward pressure forces the stomach contents to go up. Uh, through that that opening that's supposed to be shut real tight, so those are those are mechanical reasons for the problem. Uh, so the first thing you should do is cut down on caffeine, alcohol, tobacco. Don't wear tight fitting clothes, and and most importantly, lose, lose weight if you're overweight. Mm -hmm. The other uh, direction you can go with this is just a, an overproduction of too much stomach acid. So why would you do that? Well, there's certain foods that I think um, for many of us cause too much stomach acid. Chocolates, uh, sweets, uh, carbs can do that. Um, tomato sauce and, and uh, those type of products can do it. Uh, but also too much protein intake and uh, also processed foods. If you think about it, the easiest foods for us to digest are plant foods. Plant foods like a tomato or a carrot or nuts, they have enzymes in them that help us uh, break down the food. So when we chew it well, it's easy to digest. But the further you get away from those enzymes that nature has provided in live food, and you're using packaged and processed foods, the harder it is for us to digest and the more stomach acid we need. Just think about, and I, I've used this analogy before, and I'm, I'm, not propon I'm not recommending raw eggs, but... Think about how easy a raw egg would be di to digest versus scrambled eggs. It's a lot harder. Think of a piece of steak maybe you had, you, you grilled out yesterday, and you uh, grilled your steak, and you've got some left over, and today you're going to put it in the microwave and heat it up. Well, that's going to be even harder to digest because now you've heated that meat two times, makes it that much harder to break down, so you need more stomach acid to do that. So a lot of people feel it's the processed foods that cause more stomach acid to be secreted in the stomach, and that's that adds to a heavier acid load. That is the combination of that and the weakened muscle. Is that the creation of acid reflux? Then? Yes, exactly. Now s some people, you know, they they don't drink and they don't eat caffeine and and uh, they don't use tobacco and they still have heartburn. And there are some people that have a condition called a hiatal hernia where a portion of the stomach actually sort of slips through a hole in the diaphragm and it's actually found inside the chest cavity. And that can cause heartburn. And if it's big enough, that has to be fixed. Uh, fortunately, the surgery now for that is uh, laparoscopic in most cases. It's not an open surgery like we used to do. Yeah. So it's a pretty effective uh, approach and it can help people. 
you know, 90% of the time, a, a healthy lifestyle and healthy diet will reverse uh, the heartburn. So people should be empowered and know how, what can I do to fix this? And those are the things you can do. You mentioned your neurologist was uh, sitting there with a uh, container of Tums. Uh, is this a good go-to on an occasion, but then uh, a kind of a red flag if you're doing this all the time? Well, yeah, so uh, I would start worrying about the heart. Number one, if you've got a strong family history and you've got indigestion, make sure you have that checked out. There are, there are five major coronary risk factors, a strong family history, smoking and tobacco with indigestion. No, of course, uh, I'm sorry, smoking, diabetes, uh, but smoking can cause heartburn too. But those three risk factors for heart disease, family history, diabetes, and smoking, really put you at a much higher risk. So you've got to be really careful. Um, so, but typically when it's, it's heart related, it's an exertional problem. It gets better with rest and it comes on with activity, but you might just have really bad indigestion and feel sweaty or indigestion with some jaw pain or some shortness of breath or, you know, indigestion, but notice that it's, you're more short of breath going up a flight of stairs. So those are, when you start, when things start changing, don't blow that off as indigestion. Make sure that things are okay. But if you're going to treat indigestion, there's three lines of therapy. You can use the calcium carbonate uh, or bicarbonate, which is like baking soda, and that will neutralize the stomach acid. So Tums is a really good go-to first-line therapy. Uh, Then the next level up would be something like um, Pepsid AC, which is an H2 blocker. And then the third level up are the proton pump inhibitors like um, Omeprazole, uh, Prilosec, Nexium, and, and many of those you can get over the counter. But you really don't want to take those long term. They're intended to be used for 6 to 12 weeks until you can get the problem reversed. The problem is a lot of people just live on those for years. And what's happening is you're still having acid reflux. You're just not feeling that burning sensation. Yeah. You haven't fixed the problem. So you're burning the lining of your esophagus, which is not meant to be burned by acid, and it can cause an erosion that can lead to Barrett's esophagus, which is the precursor to esophageal cancer. So in my opinion, esophageal cancer really shouldn't happen unless you've got a hiatal hernia that hasn't been repaired. Esophageal cancer really most of the time is chronic acid reflux that hasn't been addressed by the root cause. It's just been covered up. Yeah, it's been covered up. And, you know, we, we, we just don't talk about this enough. And uh, when these medications work, we think everything's okay. Mm-hmm. Uh, but if, you have, if you're taking these medications long term for more than six months, you need to see somebody and schedule to have an endoscopy to make sure there's nothing going on. And if you can't get off of them, you're going to need an endoscopy every couple of years to make sure that there's no changes that it's predisposing you to esophageal cancer. So summation wise, you already talked about it. Changing your diet is probably the best thing to do uh, if you're yeah, continuing to suffer you, you, these. You think about it. Chew your food really well. Eat what nature wants you to eat. It'll be so much easier to digest it. That's number one. Um, you could even get food enzymes from the health food store to help you digest that food. When you can't digest food in the stomach, the stomach's role is to digest protein. And if you can't break down protein, it's going to make more acid uh, to do that. So be careful with those those high protein diets, especially the meats, because they can cause more stem, stomach acid secretion. Um, so those are those are the you know those are the kind of dietary things to do, and then avoiding the chemicals that that prevent that muscle from closing tight, mm-hmm. um, and and then, and not eating right before you go to bed, uh, because you, you know you're going to lay down it. And if there's a, a slight opening in that muscle, uh, the esophagus, it's going to um, reflux back up into your food into your throat, um, and then it's the it's the uh, it's the weight loss and avoiding caffeine, tobacco, and alcohol or and, limiting the use. And don't be afraid to tell your physician, hey, you know what? It's probably nothing, but here's what's been happening because uh, a test might lead to something that you, you need to you know. Just, you, you know, and the problem with heart disease is if you've got heart disease in your 40s and 50s, often you only get one chance at this. It's often one heart attack and you're done. Mm-hmm. You know, the older you get the more calcium deposition in those in that 
plaque in your in your coronary arteries, the less likely it is for a big chunk to rupture and to kill you. But it's the 40 and 50 year old decade, and sometimes early 60s, where they're the ones that tend to drop. So absolutely, do not blow this off as acid reflux. I, I'm going to need, you know, I, I got to take more tums. My neurology. Uh, professor you know he sh- he should have probably known better but i think he was like many of us all oh, this is just heartburn yeah and didn't want to face the fact that he had heart disease yeah so we got to be careful with that one all right well again go back to the produce section there you go <laughs> <laughs> thanks a lot dr tim mcknight this morning uh hopefully you'll be eating better and feeling better as we talk with the doc being brought to you by, as always, Mako's Pharmacy, offering their customers and community free assistance with comparing and selecting a plan based on your specific prescription needs. Mako's, uh, Mako's Pharmacy number 740-922-5400.